In this step, I'd like to go over how to find the public IP address of an Azure virtual machine with PowerShell. So there's a lot of changes that constantly go on in Azure and in any cloud environment in general. And this used to be a lot simpler, uh, but these days there's a lot, there's a few different ways to do this, but uh, this is about the best way that I've found to do this. So what we'll do is at the end of this snip, we will just build a function together so that we just have one single function to make this all work right. So to start off with, I have already authenticated to my Azure subscription using Connect Azure RM account. So I've already done that. The first thing we have to do is given the virtual machine name and the resource group, I need to get the VM information with get Azure RM VM. So I'll go ahead and do that and just assign that to the VM variable. Checking that out, you can see that it's just a typical VM, resource group name, VM ID, all that good stuff. Let's drill down a little bit. There's a network profile property that we want to look at. So looking at the network profile property, there is another property underneath that called network interfaces. So let's go down deep into that. And then inside of network interfaces, you have a few other different properties. So you have an ID property look at the ID property, and then you finally have a string, which is the full name of the network adapter. The get Azure RM network interface command that we have to use to get some more information doesn't take that entire string. It only takes that SRV2865 there at the end. So we can use PowerShell and limit that down a little bit. And now you see that we have SRV2865. So now we can go on to the next step, of finding the public IP's ID. To do that, we use the get Azure RM network interface command using that nickname that we got earlier and then providing the resource group name. To make this code a little bit more dynamic, you see that I'm using the resource group name of the virtual machine there. So I'll go ahead and run this and grab my NIC information. And looking at the NIC information, there's quite a few different properties here. The ones that we need is IP configurations. Now you can see that we have a public IP address property in there, but that has some properties in it as well. So we can use that, drill down a little bit more, then it becomes public IP address. So now we still don't have a simple string to get the ID. However, we can run this again. And then now you can see that we have the public IP address ID. Now, finally, once we have that, then we can find the IP address itself. To do that, we use the get Azure RM public IP address, specifying the resource group name here. Um, in this case, I would just put it out statically, but uh, just to make some good coding practices here, I will go ahead and just put it there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to enumerate all of the public IP addresses in that resource group. And then unfortunately, there's not a parameter that can only provide output that one public IP address. So we'll just filter out the ID with the where object commandlet in PowerShell. Running this, this should now bring up the public IP object, which you see that it doesn't have the IP address specifically, but you do see an IP address there, 137116, blah, blah, blah. To get the IP address, we can then reference the IP address property. That was quite a bit of rigmarole just to get an IP address. So since we're in PowerShell here, we have the capability to make this a lot better. So let's just, on the fly here, let's just create a function. So let's just create a function called get Azure public IP. This is just going to be a simple function that we're going to use ourselves, And this is a good way to learn to account for problems or um, any kind of un unintuitive issues with others' code. All right, so we're going to create a simple function here, and we're going to have a single parameter, and I'm going to make this a very simple function, and I'm going to call this VM name. So we just have VM name. You want to get the public IP address of a single VM. Now that we have the basic structure set up, now let's go and add this information in here. So what I'm going to do is copy all of this out. And then I'm going to paste it all in here. And we will just clean this up to make this work how we need here. We will don't need 
all this information, all the first few regions here, we didn't act, we don't actually need this information to the output. We just used it as input to actually get what we wanted. All right, so let's grab this out. So we just need the VM, and then we just grab this out, and we need the nickname there. So we'll remove that. Okay, and then we need the pub IP ID. So you can remove this out, move that. And then once we have that, then we don't need this, and we could just return the IP address. All right, so now, now that this is in a function, we need to replace the name here. So I will go ahead and replace this with my VM name parameter. And then let's just go ahead and change this to resource group as well, so we can just change that if ever we need to. So I'll create another parameter here called resource group. All right. Now let's see, let's go down through here, make sure it's all look okay. It looks okay. So now let's bring this in. Get Azure public IP, VM name, SRV2, resource group, ADB testing. Voila. Notice that this is one of those times when the code that you think it would be intuitive, that you think would get from Microsoft or another third party, would be the way to go, but it's a lot less intuitive. So this is the great way of creating what's called function wrappers to automate and to eliminate all that stuff that we went through. But I did want to show you how it would all work, but this is a good tip on just creating function wrappers around this. Now we can just call get Azure public IP anytime we want, and we don't have to worry about all that rigmarole. So that was how to find the public IP address of an Azure virtual machine in PowerShell.